Hello and welcome back to the course on Power BI. I hope you had a chance to look through the custom visuals available in the Power BI library because there are some powerful ones there and it's good to know what you have at your disposal when you uh, need to create some, some visualizations in the future. And uh, today we're going to continue from where we left off last time. We've got this uh, chart, the chord uh, chart that we started creating. And today we're going to populate it and you'll see how easy it is to um, create visualizations in Power BI. So everything's already set up for you and well, that's one of my favorite aspects about Power BI. So let's go ahead and create this score chart. So we're going to create one where um, we're going to visualize how much countries are lending to other countries. So we're going to focus on the countries that are lending or the creditors. So all we have to do is take the creditors from here. So remember that column we have creditors and put it from to the into the from section. Take the debtors, so that's where the money is going to. And as the value, take the amount and put it here. And that's it. As simple as that. It's all created. So uh, let's have a look at this chord diagram and understand the mechanics behind it. So uh, they, like, it might seem that there's a lot going on here, uh, but this is quite actually quite a simple chord diagram. We've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten elements in this chord diagram, and so they're kind of all intertwined. So um, sometimes you can have way more. And uh, yeah, as you can see, Power BI is actually doing quite a good job of handling these. All right, so let's understand how this works. Let's take France, for example. What does this mean? Well, this means, or the size of this represents how much France has actually lent to other countries. Remember, we're focusing on creditors. So, uh, in fact, let's just rename this chart before uh, so that we don't forget. Let's go to title and we'll just change this to creditors. And let's change the size to a 12. All right, so now at the top over here, we, we know that we're dealing with creditors. Um, all right, so France in total lent $957 billion, right? And then all of these... Uh, items that are going out of the circle, out of this uh, element, uh, are telling you where uh, France lent them. Um, so, for instance, here, if you hover over, you'll see that France lent Italy $366 billion. And that's why this part is going into Italy over here. Um, then here you, you can see France lent United States. This this pie over here is United States. France lent United States $322 billion. Then here we've got another one. France lent Spain $118 billion. And then another one. France lent Greece $53.9 billion. And then can't really see, but it's going over here. So there you go. And so the question is, um, a couple of questions here. First one is, why is Greece so small and the United States so small? Uh, what does that mean? Well, that just basically means that they are not that uh, large as creditors. Remember in this one, we're focusing on creditors. So the size of these um, elements of this pie, as you, you might call it a pie, are actually just re directly proportionate to the amount of money that each of these countries lent other countries. So this, this has nothing to do with how much was borrowed. This is just lending. So you can see that the United States only lent $17.36 billion to other countries. And Greece... Greece only lent, where is this? Can't even see how much it lent. Greece, oh, Greece lent zero. <laughs> Greece lent literally zero dollars to other countries. So that's how it works. And at the same time, it's important to note that uh, here we can see that France lent money to Italy. So uh, if you look at it from the point of view of Italy, there's outflows, right? And there's actually inflows, right? So every country on this chart, even though we're focusing on creditors, every country in this chart, because they are intertwined, so if money is going out, it's going somewhere, then it has to be going in somewhere. So because of that, every country actually has these little other ones, little other, um, I don't know even what to call them, little other um, pathways that represent money being lent to that country. So for instance, in the case of France, you can see this little... Uh, a path coming in and you can see it says here Britain lent France 22.4 billion dollars right and the important thing to understand 
and kind of like keep in mind here is the ones. So this, the size of this part is only uh, made up out of the ones out of the pathways that are going out. So only out of these channels that are leaving. So when actually France was lending other countries, the channels that are coming in, they are very thin. They're very thin and they don't contribute to the width of this uh, piece of the pie. And that makes sense because we are focusing on creditors here. So when money is coming in, that's actually borrowing money and it's just a, it's a symbolic pathway. So it's just showing the directional movement is not in any way contributing to the size. So therefore you'll see regardless of how big the pathway or this channel is when it's leaving a country, for instance, here in the case of Japan, Japan lent United States $796 billion, right? It's a huge wide channel when it leaves, but when it arrives at the destination, it's always going to be uh, as thin as like one or two pixels be simply because of the fact that Arriving channels do not contribute to the size of that piece of the pie. So there we go. So uh, you can explore this diagram and uh, find out a bit more which countries lent which other countries. So right away from here, you can see that Japan lent uh, nearly a trillion dollars in total. France lent uh, 957 billion. Germany lent 803 billion. Spain 561. Britain 413, Italy 117, and so on. Ireland, actually Ireland lent somebody $18 billion, uh, United States 17, and Greece lent zero. And so the, it's it's very interesting. I find these quarter diagrams very interesting because they're actually all dealing with each other, right? So it's not like they're lending other countries. They're lending money to each other. And uh, so you can look uh, observe these dependencies and uh, the flow of money within these countries. So there you go. That's that's the mechanics of the core diagram. And uh, also, I would like to reiterate again how, even though this is a complex diagram, you can tell that it is complex and it's conveying these insights. Uh, it is simplifying them, but still has so many elements to it. And despite that, it was so easy for us to create it. We just downloaded this uh, pre-built template and we just put in three columns into their designated spots and that's it it's right and that's one of the uh, coolest features about power bi that it is so simple and so intuitive to uh, work with all right so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial uh, have a play around with that explore this diagram a bit further and we'll continue in the next tutorial i look forward to seeing you there and until next time happy analyzing